So if you're fitting something to a power law, it's important to consider other possible distributions you might fit to as well. Maybe the data is well described by a power law, but even better described by a log normal. So in this video, I want to describe two, uh, two approaches for uh, thinking about how you might compare fits to different distributions. So the picture is that you have some data and you might uh, do a power law fit. So you'd fit to the power law. And so you'd get uh, an alpha hat and an x min hat. So you'll get your best estimators for the exponent and for the lower cutoff for the power law behavior. Then you uh, might also fit to alternatives. And again, you would get um, estimated parameters using the maximum likelihood estimator appropriate for that distribution. So if you were doing log normals, you would do the maximum likelihood estimators for log normals. And you might get these. And a different distribution would have different parameters. Some might have one parameter, some two or three. So now you've got these two possible fits, and you want to know which one is better. So there are two possible approaches. One is to calculate p-values for both. And so remember that p-values, uh, in this context, in this setting, that a larger p-value we saw indicated more evidence for a power law. Similarly, if we did that for, say, a log normal, a large p-value would indicate um, uh, strong evidence for a log normal. And so suppose you fit to a power law and got a high p-value and said, yes, well described by a power law. You try a couple alternatives and get low p-values, then you can more or less reject those alternatives and you're set. You can conclude, okay, this, is, this really is well described by a power law. Of course, you can never try all the alternatives, um, but it might be good to try some of the sort of more common ones, exponential, stretched exponential, log normal, and so on. And the paper by Closet, Chalizzi, and Newman, um, where this outline is, is also given, talks about some of the more um, often occurring uh, some of the more common distributions that are often confused with power laws. So that's one approach. Calculate p-values and maybe you can use those to eliminate some of the alternatives. But what if you have multiple alternatives which, you know, look, both look reasonably plausible according to their p-values? What would you do then? So then there's an approach known as um, likelihood ratios. hardest time spelling that word. That's better likelihood. So here's how that would work. Let me describe that just in broad general terms. Uh, lots, lots of technical details are in, the, uh, are in the paper. So likelihood ratio. So what you could do is once you have your parameters for both of these, you could calculate the likelihood. And that means the likelihood of the data you observed given the parameters you just calculated. So in other words, which, um, in which of the models that you just inferred, this or this, make the data more likely. And then the standard thing to do is to uh, turn that into a ratio or a logarithm of a ratio, in which case it can become positive or negative. Um, then we'd need to establish some sort of criteria for how large a likelihood ratio would have to be in order for us to consider that significant. Say it's the same thing like if you're tossing, if you're tossing a coin, heads or tails, you would need, uh, and, and you tossed it 100 times and you got 2% um, more um, heads than tails, you probably would say, okay, yes, the ratio of heads to tails is not exactly one, but it's not significantly different than one. 
So the same thing happens for likelihood ratios or log likelihood ratios. We'll need to have some sort of sense of how big that ratio has to be before we would say, eh, that probably didn't happen by chance. This, this option probably really is better than the other one. And the approach there, again, is to um, bootstrap. So basically create um, synthetic data from both of these, use those to repeatedly um, calculate likelihood ratios, and then see what this, uh, a range of likelihood ratios you'd expect. And then that would let you figure out if the likelihood ratio that you observed was significantly different than one. And that would tell you if one of these models, one of these distributions, was strongly favored over the other. So there's a lot of technical details in there. And the Closet newman chalisi paper is as clear a description of that approach as I've seen, and it's well referenced. So if you want to dig into this literature, um, that would definitely be the place to start. The main point here is that um, when you're fitting for power laws, it's almost always a good idea to compare to different alternatives. And here are some approaches that will let you do that.